All right, time for a Shaco beginner's guide. Uh, this is going to be a lower rated game due to it being a beginner's guide. This is like low silver ish in that region. I do this because I want the similar teammates as well as the similar opponents to, uh, well, replicate a game and then I can tell you what I do and why I do it. So you walk out of base and instantly just rush to this place, put the box down right away. Uh, you want to start placing boxes at 50 seconds because the box lasts 40 seconds and the camp spawns at 130. So 50 seconds. I generally tend to wait to 51 seconds just to be safe off spawn timing, but yeah. There's a link in the description for the box placements, so you guys would be aware of that. There we go. So I'm just gonna follow the image of the box placements. I hope this guy helps me with a leash. If he doesn't, then that would be extremely unfortunate for me. Because uh, that's gonna slow my jungle clear down significantly, but I would still do the same thing. Do right here. Can this... Can, can I get, like... Just straight up AFK, eh? Okay, then. And then the last box is here. Yo, is this guy gonna, like, do anything at all, Akali? No? Cool. Note for this, you want to make sure that you are actually... No, that's kind of funny. That feels bad, man. With this, you want to make sure that you get the auto attack this thing once. I will apparently do not. I apparently don't get a leash for my Akali here, which I guess happens in this elo. No matter how much I ping it, I just don't get the leash. It's a kind of a rip situation. It's gonna slow me down a fair amount, but yeah. As long as you get a leash, this red buff, as you can see me struggling with it right here, would have died so much faster. So all of this time would have been completely saved, essentially. So and it. It happens, man. I don't know. That's whatever. If he doesn't want to leash me, I guess it is what it is. Now here you want to get these camps kind of low. Like kind of half HP, these small ones. And then you can get them with one box. So like about this range, as soon as that box goes off, this camp dies. So I can just leave. I'm not going to go for the top play. I can now look for an invade, potentially play on Vi here. I'm, most li I'm assuming she goes for like some kind of full clear. Oh, there she is. What the heck? I mean, my clear is faster than her. I also have Halo Blades and Ignite, so her fighting me is very unrealistic. She also wasted her flesh. Good. That's just an invade you can do at this point. It's uh, pretty free considering I have Ignite and I have Halo Blades. So, there's no real chance of her fighting me, like, ever in that situation, so this is fine. I'm gonna just use the box that I placed earlier here to help me clear this camp real quick. And probably instantly leave the situation, because the Vi is gonna show up, I would imagine. I'll smite for your quickness. Use the box to get rid of the shield here. So there are multiple things you can do off of this clear. You can look for an early top gank if there is enough pressure for that gank or mid lane. Or if there's not in either lane, you can easily look for like that invade that I did if the enemy jungler is weaker than you in an early game fight. Wouldn't really recommend doing it against like Xin Zhao and stuff because that would be bad. But uh, yeah. Vi apparently is going for my bot side here. So let's check this out. This is like desperation from the enemy jungler right now. This is something they can't do, but they will do every time. You can use the box like over the wall like that to get it going with you. Use your E to execute to, to get your kills. And this is a good situation for me. A lot of junglers do this, that like what the Vi did right now, and they get extremely desperate to actually get the uh, kill or get like one of your camps. So this is just an instant response that you can just punish. And now we're very, very well set up based off of a single invade. The extra clear, clear speed you get from those box setups and stuff like that puts you in a very good spot. After dying to an invade like she did, she shouldn't have gone for the invade back because that actually is extremely risky and very likely to fail. She should have just played it safer, really. I don't know if this is actually going to be a possible gank, but we can try it out. Ooh, this is this is bad. He's dead. I, did I get juked out? I did, didn't I? I did, yeah. Feels bad, man. I actually should push the wave. She just hit six. 
That's uh, not great for us, really. He just straight killed the, Z the Zerath in that situation. I'm gonna have to smite here. I'm gonna do my topside two camps here, so my Krogs and my Raptors, since these are the camps I have actually cleared so far in my jungle. So they're worth quite a bit of experience. And this way, uh, yeah. Also what I do early game here is I put three up to three points in my boxes for additional clear speed. Especially if I get early kills, I tend to do this as well because this means that my clear speed's still very quick. But I will also have like still have good damage. Because if you max E, you, like your ganks become a little bit easier if you like put all your points in E first, but your clear will be slower essentially. The funny thing here is the Akali didn't leash me and is now asking me for assistance. <laughs> Imagine that. There we go. I'm just gonna go bolt here. They are both recalling. Okay then. That means I'll just stall some time by clearing my camps. Get some XP out of it. The game has slowed down a tiny bit here, but as you can see this points and extra points and boxes are helping me clear. Which is extremely useful. Because Shaco's clear is pretty damn bad. So putting these extra points in boxes early. Up to three is really all you need. Is really helpful for the uh, situation. I'm not gonna get him. I'm not gonna get him. Damn. That's uh... Not sure if she healed, to be honest. I didn't really look at that. I'm assuming she started red. I started like red, so her red should be up. It is up. Good. Try to get as many backstabs up as possible for extra damage. Um, Morgana? Oh, I got it. Oh, Vi. Oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh my god, I actually got that. She smited it in everything. Go over the wall here. Surprise the Vi with the boxes. There he goes. You can place a box on a blast plant, as I showed you there again, uh, to help the box get over the wall with you at the same time. Which can be an effective trick. Good. She actually walked up into that. It's not bad. I was kind of waiting for her to do that. This controller it also helps with like vision overall. Now actually what I can do here to be an absolute bully, and this is like Shaco things, is I know her blue is respawning, so I could just invade her again. She's right here, okay. Problem here is that Zareth is backing, so the invade probably is not gonna work, but it is an absolute bully move. I'm just gonna do the scuttle. Like the second tier scuttle here, as, uh, apart from like the first rotation, getting every single scuttle if you can is extremely valuable. Okay, Orin is now defending the Vi. Essentially, I don't know if that was his goal or if it was goal to get the plants, but I can't do much there. Also ganking Orn for me really isn't good because he is so extremely tanky that I probably won't kill him. All right, at this point, we have enough points in RW for jungle clear speed. As you see, these camps are dying pretty easily, pretty quickly. So now we're just going to look for uh, points in E for execute damage. Akali is getting absolutely obliterated. I could have helped her with like a potential early top lane gank. Because if she leeches me and Orn starts pushing the wave, I could have like had a level 3 gank set up for her. Which could have instantly resulted in a kill on Orn, Which would have changed her game outcome, but she decided not to do it. Again, using the boxes there to uh, get the camp. This is actually not bad. He should be in this bush here. Hill of Blades proc. I'm gonna use my E for a slow now. Wait, it stopped moving? Right then. Very interesting. My clones just randomly stopped moving. I don't have much mana currently. I'm assuming she's gonna be here. She's just recalling. Okay, fine. Wait, wait. Did she have blue? She did. Alright, fine. Has 
Oh, that's cool. It ended up in getting me a kill on Orn, or at least the assist on Orn, which gives me the bounty from Relentless Hunter, which is really all I cared about. The rest doesn't matter that much, so we'll take it. We're gonna go for the Essence Reaver straight away now. Now, the Shaco build that I like to go for is... Uh, you can, if you want, build this into Duskbite right away from this point. That is viable choice. Uh, I just prefer going for the Dirk into Essence Reaver. Even at that point, you can still build it into like a Duskblade or an Eclipse or anything of the sort. But the Essence Reaver after Dirk is very, very strong in general. So that's why I like to build it. I don't think I got spotted by that. She walked up? I'm making sure that I just use my Red Smite and Ignite on her just to ensure she dies. Because at that point, if she like flashes away from me or something, that could get awkward. And I didn't really want that, so we should be fine. This is also why you run Red Smite on Shaco, because the double Ignite tick and also the extra dueling potential it gives you for the damage reduction is extremely good. But yeah, the double Ignite tick is basically the main thing. Okay, well, they're all just hitting it. This thing is charging away from it. Good. Right now, we're just going to keep my clear up here, hit the blue, hit the gromp, and we just place one box to double camp it, basically. You can use the box again here for the split damage. It hits both camps. Just doing it this way slightly faster. Making sure here, at best, best as I can, to like rotate through my camps still. Uh, it's very, very effective and very valuable to do, because it's going to give you that like, experience lead. And with these points in boxes, it's actually like... E easily doable. As you can see, these extra points and boxes are helping me a ton with clearing these camps. Alright, so Vygot just got a Rift Herald. She could use a top or mid. Turret's already dead. Okay, top's already gone. I mean, Akali is just losing too hard, I suppose. That's fine. There's a Vy here. Vy's gonna go in on mid for this. Zareth actually started winning now, which is interesting. Alright, good. That's nice. That, I don't know when this turned around for mid lane, but it's nice that it did. Alright, just check her bot side. I'm gonna go for the bot play instead of going for Orn here. Oh, the red is up, yeah. I figured something would be up. I didn't expect it to be the red, to be fair, but... I love how she assist pings me more. I'm just gonna ignore that lane as much as possible. I really don't care. Because there's so much pressure that I can apply for the rest of the map that I really don't care if Orn actually like wins something in the early game here. Doesn't really do anything. I'm using the box as a defensive thing instead of helping me clear and just leave. Because I'm not going to realistically get a fight in here properly. I wonder if this is actually a good play. Yeah, I didn't think so. If the Nico wouldn't have walked down, I could have just sniped out the camp there. But if she walks down, I die. So that's why I played it as safe as I did. I suppose just taking the back, getting my uh, Essence Reaver Heroes to play. Okay. Time to run mid. She's gonna use the Herald mid lane here. So, going mid now. That's actually an instant death. I think that Zareth just... Okay, Morgana already killed him. Never mind. And Morgana also dies. We should be able to rotate to mid here. I don't know if her ult's up or not. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so uh, what you can do in a situation with Hill of Blades is how your ult works. It gives you a snapshot of stats, right? So what you can do is you auto attack first, then your Hill of Blade procs, giving you an insane amount of extra attack speed. Which in turn, uh, if you then instantly ult after that, your clone will have an increased attack speed for the entire duration, like it has per my Hill of Blades. So that's one thing I did there, then also used my ult to just dodge some of the hits there, and then I like, essentially walked out of the um, Nico ult, because she placed it pretty poorly, to be fair. So it ended up working fine for me. It was kind of close, though. Alright, solid. Now I'm just making sure here to uh, keep my clear going. The Zareth is doing pretty well for himself, which is what we like to see. Okay, 
And keeping my clear up here, as you can see, my farm is pretty decent. This Zareth is actually farming really well, surprisingly enough. Interesting. Now again, uh, you have the option of going a mythic here. Uh, I think I will just... You can just get collector and go for like a mythicless setup for a while. Go collector and then... Um, go collector into infinity edge and then you can pick up like a mythic afterwards like a guild force for example or just skip your mythic mythic entirely it's completely up to you but i will go for the mythic set right now to show you that as well in my like literally my last video i did this build mythic list so if you are interested in that just look for literally my last shaco video and you should be fine but yeah we're doing this we're also holding top wave here because the wave is pretty nice and i can just yoink this quickly but we're gonna go for the um Mythic now, so get the Dusk Blade here. See if he takes an engage. I don't think he will, but he could. I think I could very well, very well die to him if he takes the engage on me now. Orn is pretty scary, so I have to respect him a little bit. Dragon's spawning, so I'm definitely just gonna rotate down. I'm gonna ignore the Orn as much as possible, really. Now, if the enemy, like, going Collector as well is a thing. If, if the enemy team is more tanky, just not going Collector and going straight for Lord Dominix is better. Uh, but, yeah, that's up to you, uh, up to you, really. Kill this. Move down to the dragon here. I have no vision on it, which is a little bit sketchy. I think she's just straight up doing it. She is not. I think I'll just take my time to double camp this then. I don't think I have the time to do that. Fine. Orn is showing up for this, that's not good. Mm. Okay. That is not good. My best way in is just over this wall right here. He still killed one of them. Orn is here. This Orn is putting up enough pressure for this to be awkward, essentially, now. Because he is actually rotating for stuff, which is also a little surprising, but that's a good play from him. It really is. If he would have been sticking to AFK to A playing AFK top lane, then he would be in trouble. Walk back first out of vision. I guess I can just scout here and see if she like did something stupid. I think she walked back to turret respectfully. Oh, well, she didn't, but yeah, okay. Well. I know it's just the real one now, so I can actually just obliterate her right now. Use my ult to dodge that, so I don't get hit by it. If you time your ults properly, then you can dodge a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna send the clone the other way. It will come back to me like this. And I can just do the uh, red buff real quick now. She's actually just straight up dead here. She tried to fight me and then basically got into a fair, a fair CC chain, so... That didn't really end up working out too well for her. But yeah, try to hold your ult. Like, you can hold your ult for a lot of those situations. Like, holding ult for Nico there. I wouldn't really have engaged that Nico if my ult wasn't up. Because without ult, it's going to be extremely awkward. Uh, if you get Nico ult, that you get obliterated, essentially. But you can dodge it, then there's no problem, really. Alright, just get this. Beautiful. Mm, not going to get that, actually. This guy's still going hard on top. The problem with my build setup is I literally don't do damage to that guy. And Akali doesn't do it either because she went for camp tank. Make sure the aggro doesn't switch to the box consistently because then the aggro bar from the blue buff resets. Making sure here that I keep rotating through my camps. I think I'm fine to go for a collector setup here still, seeing as how it's only Orn that's tanky, right? Uh, the rest I don't really have to worry about. I can just get like a Lost Whisper later on in the build, which should be fine as well. Would she be doing Rift Herald? I think she's the type of player that would go for Rift Herald here. I think the Orn might be helping her. Yep, there it is. I'm going for mid here. My god. I just have to get like, get my E off. She's dead here already. I actually don't want to Q because I want to hold that. Let's see if I can get here. She's walking this. That's not the real one. Alright, you did the same thing again, buddy. Good. Oh, wait. Did I miss time at this time? I actually mistimed it this time. That's my bad. Oops. 
She is probably in here, I would imagine. Am I dead? Reds might save my life. Okay, beautiful. That was close. I looked at that and I was like, wait, single target uh, Kai'Sa Q damage is hefty. I could die for this. I didn't though, luckily. I get this. We're looking good here. Get the collector in one buy in a second. I'm just gonna recall right now. If this is Warden and I die to something random, I'm gonna be depressed, but I don't think it will be. Get the collector here. Again, if the enemy team is very tanky, just get the Lord Dominix instead. But the enemy team only has an Orn that's tanky. The rest is easily killable. So I still prefer the collector. I can just ignore the Orn like I've been doing all game, essentially. Next item here, I'm just going to go for Infinity Edge still. And we still have the Duskblade to uh, basically hold on to. Um, and after Infinity Edge, I'm probably going to go Lord Dominic still, or I just go for like a lifesteal item for a little bit more sustain, which would be fine as well. Other viable mythic options as well would be like, if you're going for the critless or for the mythicless build for the start of the game, you can do that into uh, going for Gil Force, for example, or even Shield Bow, like something crit based essentially at the same time there as well. And there is also the option of just going for like Stride Breaker, Blade of the Rune King type of build on Shaco as well, if you want. But, yeah, that's up to you. This is the build I like. This is the build I think works, like, the best. Because it instantly kills people at this uh, elo. Essentially, they just walk out of range so... Or, like, they walk out of position so often. That it will result in a bunch of free kills. If he's slow... This Zerath is, like... Putting in the damn work, my guy. Okay. I mean, it lightens up my game, like, the, the need of me having to carry this game a little bit, which is not too bad. Just save me a little bit of effort. I think I would have been fine doing it myself regardless, but, you know, if you have a teammate sometimes, that it helps. I still absolutely punish the fight to the into the oblivion. There's literally nothing she could have done to play this game against me, essentially. Also, now what I'm doing here is I'm punishing, like, her consistently. Like, as soon as I get a lead, I'm living in her jungle, not in my own. My own camps don't matter. Her camps are everything. I just take everything from her. If you get a lead, this is how you have to play as a jungler. Because if you don't play like this, you actually give him a, a way back into the game, which could cost you the game right away. I think Kaisa's here. Yeah, there she is. Good. Use this. Wait for my Q to be back up, essentially. She was typing, I'm pretty sure, so we just go for her there. It's fine. She didn't walk into my box. That's interesting. And I just kill her with one auto attack. Interesting. The box is still here, so... I'm actually just gonna leave. I'll use my clone here to... Uh, Stall the Orn, I suppose. So Caitlyn can get away. Yeah, Orn is not something I can kill. He has way too much armor. Like, I didn't build for this. If I had Lord Dominix, I'd have a better chance at killing him. But I don't care enough to get that for one single guy. So this is fine with me. I would like to smite this scuttle, but I shouldn't. Because I want to have smite for the dragon that I'm about to do. So... Interesting. I think the dragon is something I have to give up on. I'm gonna smite the blue now to get myself more HP in case I do have to fight, because my smite's gonna be up 15 seconds now. As you can see here, like the main thing to take away at this point as well is I'm level 15. My Zareth is also level 15. He's doing very well for himself. Interesting. I was not expecting this. Oh, I see. I mean, there's not much I can do about this dragon situation, really. Really not much I can do. Oh my god. I okay, use my ult to dodge the last hit from that Q there, otherwise I would have died. Probably should have ulted to dodge the E, I would imagine, but this works as well. <laughs> Holy moly. I just need 100 gold, so one more camp. I'm just gonna insta-smite wolves to get my HP so I don't die.
Good. Beautiful. This should be enough for the uh, Infinity Edge. We can purchase this. And then the last item in this build, I'm probably gonna go for something lifesteal. Because a little bit more sustain would be nice. So I'm thinking... I don't know. I could do a bunch of things, honestly. Click at... Where is it? Lifesteal. I think maybe Blade might actually be not that bad for Orn, but then again, I need armor penetration for that guy. I, go, I guess Ravenous Hydra is decent. I can also not opt for this and opt for like armor penetration instead. But I feel like Lifesteal probably is a little bit better, so maybe Bloodthirster is just fine. And the Sona's gonna be here. Just two shot him. I mean, it's uh, Infinity Edge Death. Right there. An ally has been slain. You should die to that, yeah. Okay, Collector coming in clutch. At this point, we're just playing extremely aggressive, picking up whatever we can. Uh, making sure to also in like consistently take his camp so he doesn't get to go come back in this game, essentially. Goodbye. Now we're just living in his jungle. We're taking everything from him. Every single camp that's here is mine. Okay, this is down. Her blue should still be up unless Orna has it. Nope, he doesn't. Okay, we're going for the blue then. Shaco zero help. I, I kind of love this. I wouldn't gank the Orn anyway. It doesn't even matter if she leased me or not. Like, I maybe would have done one early gank and that would have been it. But I love this because she completely ignored me for the first leash. So that's kind of funny. Like, she straight up fully ignored me on the leash. So, and now she's complaining that I do, didn't do anything. Which is just honest, that's honestly karma. Really is what it is. I would never have gone top lane, don't get me wrong, like ganking Orn for for me as Shaco is just not a thing I wanted to do. Especially considering how I can consistently like uh, easily abuse the other laners much easier because they're just easy kills. And Orn just stacks the hell out of resistances and Akali just went for like a build that doesn't even do any real damage. So it didn't really work out too well regardless, but it's just funny. I ah, got it. I'm gonna go for him. He's the easiest target out of that one. He's trolling, right? This should be fine. I'm not gonna dive in too deep. I think the Akali should have the damage to kill here. Otherwise my my cha my ult does. That's fine. I don't want to chase that because I could easily die to like a Vi ultimate or something. If that sh uh, thing hits me, I can get locked down by like Kai'Sa and get one shot. I'm worth a thousand gold, I have to respect that. I'm not hitting turret here, I'm waiting for like an opportunity to potentially just go in. Team's doing well. Place a box here, see if they walk through this side. I'm just being, like, safe. I could technically go and hit this thing, but it's more risky for me, and this is a lot safer, waiting for them to make, like, any type of error. I'm just setting up some boxes for, like, a line of defense here as well. Uh, but, yeah. I think going for the Bloodthirster here for the lifesteal is just fine. Like, having extra lifesteal is just nice in general. Mm. Smart check, actually, with that. How much is Bloodthirster? 3400 I see. I need like 3100 or something, 3200 to be able to purchase that. I'm kind of close. Could also get a Lord Dominix here for more armor penetration if I actually want to kill that Orn. Because th th basically, like, getting Lord Dominix here is like the w a way to kill Orn, essentially. It's only going to be good for Orn right now because Vi isn't tanky enough for it to matter at the moment. So if I want to kill Orn, I need to purchase that, but I don't think I care about killing Orn that much. Again, consistently, as you see me do here, I am living in his jungle. Absolutely living in it. It's all mine. My own camps, I do not care about. All her camps are mine. As you can see, I have like a hundred uh, plus CS lead on her here due to that. Like, I'm just abusing the fact that she can't do anything. She doesn't get the farm, basically. Uh... I 
Mercy fight here is pretty bad. I'm actually kind of hoping that they would walk into me here. That would be helpful. I could use my ult, maybe. Scout out the situation. Walk in close range enough to where I could just use that as like a fake out play. Send this into their team. Send it after Sona. Execute the Sona. I essentially kited that thing all the way over vision. Alright, good. He's dead. I have my Infinity Edge in... Or, uh, sorry, my Bloodthirster, sorry. In the uh, in camp here. So I just gotta go back for that. Get the lifesteal. I got the lifesteal and the crit at the same time, I might as well. Like, I could also go, like, Ravenous Hydra here would be fine, or even, like, Bladed Rune King would be okay as well, honestly. As long as you just get a lifesteal item, really. I, uh, yeah, it's up to you. I, at this point, honestly, like, if you want to transition this into, like, a Mythicless build as well, instead of, like, holding onto your Duskblade, that would be fine. Because the advantage of going, like, selling my Duskblade here, for example, would be that I get 100% crit if I build, like, a crit Mythic. So if I build, like, Gil Force, for example, um, I would get 100% crit off that. I just got a Baron now. That's all we really have to do. I'm still making sure that I, like, check her camps as much as I can. I just need my team to show up for Baron and we should be good. I'm gonna use my, my clone... Are you gonna hit Baron? Hello? Doesn't wanna... Doesn't it? Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's tanking Baron anyway, so I don't get the Baron damage debuff, but my clone does. So this way it's uh, faster. Because Baron, like, if you see a hand disappear or like appear in this area, it means that you have a 50% damage reduction on Baron. Which is something I'm trying to avoid here by making my clone tank Baron instead. I'm level 18. Pretty much full build. Like, I can switch Mythic still if I want If I want more crit. Like, Guild Force is also pretty nice because it gives execution damage. Um, so, that would be a fine option, honestly. We should honestly just push top. We are in a position to push top anyway. This Vi is probably going to check her camp, so I would imagine she's, like, right here. She is. I finally ignite you then. I maybe didn't have to ignite him there, but it's not a big deal. You saw the Vi path upwards like this, so... I see. I probably could have engaged on her, but the only thing I have to be careful for there is essentially not knowing where the rest of their team is. If I knew where the rest of them were, I would have just engaged that. Let me just place a box here as well. I'm gonna get spotted by those minions, I'm pretty sure. She really just ult for that. She ulted to clear a minion wave, and she didn't even succeed. Interesting. I guess I could show you, like, if the game lasts long enough, I could show you the Gil Force option as well. Because I will have the money for it. It's kind of funny with the execution damage you get from it, because of the active... Alright, they're confused now. That's another good thing about Duskblade, by the way, is it actually kind of... Because uh, it turns both you and your clone invi uh, invisible, so you can kind of shake it up. Uh, when they, like, when you get a kill and your clone's out, like, you can kind of walk between you and your clone, so they actually have a harder time detecting who is who. Which is why Duskblade's also kind of nice. Instant kill. He's not gonna die. Okay. Ah, damn it. Not happening. Anyway, that is it for Shaco. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to put those in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe for more. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.